Welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos I put out. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. We are gonna go over something. I'm working on a piece this week. And so you'll see the choice I made for on Thursday of what I'm going to use on this piece. But I wanted to take the time to show you guys in a video the difference between using a heat gun and a paint scraper or using, you know, your just entry level sander and using a chemical stripper and kind of what you need to do with each one, what the difference is, kind of pros and cons of each. I do all three of them and each one of them has their place. So I will talk about that in this video today and we're just gonna be doing an example on the top of the buffet sideboard that I'll be working on for this week so that you guys can see. So this will probably talk about some of the, so that you guys know what your options are when you are stripping down the top of a piece that has previously been painted. So stay the first thing I'm going to use is a heat gun. So I am using a Makita heat gun. You can find these at your local hardware store. There are a bunch of different brands and this piece has paint on it. So I'm showing you how to remove the paint with three different techniques. So what you want to do is you want to be patient and you want to watch while that paint bubbles up. And once that paint bubble up, bubbles up, that means that the finish has been compromised and you can scrape it off. And so don't get too close and don't stay in one spot for too long because it will start smoking. And then I take this paint scraper, which I will put in the description below. This is a really awesome paint scraper that I also use for when I'm refinishing or restoring stuff. And this will pull off that paint once it's bubbled. So with a heat gun, you don't have too much of a mess. You do need to wear a mask because the fumes from it can be kind of irritating, but it's pretty easy. Now going on ornate areas is a little bit more tough with a heat gun. So next I'm using a chemical stripper. I live in Germany, so I'm using a chemical stripper from here. There's a bunch of different kinds that you can use. Why don't you guys let us know below in the comments what your favorite chemical stripper is and where you are located. I put my chemical stripper on with a cheap chip brush. You will want to be in a well-ventilated area. I use a mask and you want to wear gloves. You're going to let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and you can see it bubbling right there and that's when you know that it's starting to work. Generally on the top of a piece, I use a plastic scraper, which you'll see here. Again, I'll put it in the description below. It's one of my favorites because it's kind of got a scoop so it holds in all that paint. It is a little bit easier of a process. It's going to be a little bit more messy because afterwards you're going to have to neutralize it with mineral spirits, which I will show you. So with a heat gun, you could probably strip the entire piece off it would take you about an hour or so with a chemical stripper, with putting it on, waiting the 15 to 20 minutes and then stripping it off. It's probably gonna take you max half an hour to do it. So it's a little bit faster, but you need more safety gear and you also have to use the mineral spirits or some kind of neutralizer afterwards. You don't need to do that with your heat gun, but a stripper gets into a lot of ornate areas. It's a little bit easier on rounded surfaces, especially with the plastic scraper. So there is a time and place for each thing. And I will talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. But again, if you're using a chemical stripper on your piece, you do wanna neutralize that afterwards. And with a chemical stripper and with a heat gun, I always sand afterwards so to get it's smooth and get any debris off. And right here, I'm going over it with the mineral spirits to neutralize it and to get any kind of excess residue off of it. So that is something you do need to make sure you do. Now I'm going in with an entry level Bosch orbital sander. You, this is not my favorite method to get a layer of paint off the top of something, but it can work if you do not prefer to use stripper and if you don't want to use a heat gun, it does take longer 
You're probably going to have to take breaks depending on the kind of paint. So this was a latex. It will gum up your sandpaper. So you may use a little bit more sandpaper. So this is probably not the best thing to do when you've got a painted surface, but it will work if you prefer this method. It's also just as effective. It just takes a little bit longer. So in the end, you don't have to use with a sander. You don't have to neutralize it. You don't have to sand after you sand. So I'm going to talk about it in summary here in a couple minutes and really the chemical stripper is probably the fastest to get it off of a flat top. Then you're took it, looking at your heat gun. Then you're looking at an entry level sander. I do use a surf prep sander and that rips the surface off, but that is an investment. And if you're just starting out, one of these orbital sanders will do a great job. Now I am using a Bosch, but I do really like Bosch and DeWalt. So you can get these sanders on Amazon. I will put a link below, but you can also get them at your hardware store as well. So you can see it does take it down to the raw wood, but it takes quite a bit of time. Okay, everybody. So I showed you the three different ways that I take paint off of a previously painted dresser buffet, the top of something. I do do this as well when it's a stained piece. So I wanna kind of walk you through if it's veneer, you can refinish veneer, but it's a thin, thin piece of wood. So you need to remember that when you're doing it. So generally when I do veneer and I will pop a video right here, my last video I did veneer on here. So it would be, you can watch it. Look at my finger. <laughs> I'm painting red this week. So if you have veneer, normally what I do is I take a chemical stripper first because you have to just be careful with it. Don't, don't feel like intimidated by it. You just have to be a little bit more careful um, with veneer versus solid wood. So this was a solid wood top, so it wasn't as bad. There are a lot of videos that I show you how to recognize veneer. If you flip the back of the piece, if you look at the back of the piece and it looks like there's some plywood or pressed wood, and then there's a thin little layer of wood that looks like this. Ooh, well, okay. If there's a thin little layer of wood that looks like this, then that means that it's veneer. If you guys go back to a lot of my videos, I generally teach you all this stuff anyways. So with veneer, I always use a chemical stripper and then I sand, but I don't start with an 80 grit sandpaper. I start with 120 and go up to 220. There is no need when you're doing veneer, if you've already taken off either the pre-existing finish or paint, you don't need to go in with an 80 grit sandpaper because what you're doing is you're trying to get, can it, any residual off of there, smooth it out, get it ready for stain. And you don't need to do the 80 because 80 is when you're trying to remove a finish off. So you're not trying to remove a finish if you've already done it with a chemical stripper. Okay. With chemical strippers, you have to do, you have to neutralize them. So I neutralize them with mineral spirits. And then I always sand after that's dried. I always sand with a chemical stripper. If I use a heat gun, I always sand after that helps smooth out and get any residual, any excess, any kind of little pieces off that may have been left behind. Obviously when you sand, you've already done that. You don't need to use a chemical stripper or when you sand, you don't need to neutralize it. You don't need to do that. When you do a heat gun, you don't need to neutralize it either. So chemical stripper, neutralize, sand, okay? Sander, you just sand. Heat gun, I usually heat gun and sand. And that's it, guys. So it's up to you, honestly. I know this video didn't help you that much when it comes to choosing what's best. I will say for me, if it is a thick layer of something, whether it's a finish and it's got like a super hard finish on it, there's a lot of paint, a chemical stripper, even though it's gonna possibly be, it's gonna, you have to kind of go through more steps. It's going to be easier in the long run, especially on your wrist. Cause if you're sanding, even if you're sanding with a great sander, like I typically use a surf prep, but I did show you in this video, a, a beginner sander, but Sanding a piece, I, I try to work smarter and not harder, and that is why I just choose per piece. So if there is a thick layer of paint or finish on the top of something and I'm refinishing it, I always go in with a chemical stripper. Now, if the finish is already kind of chipping and it's like a thin layer and you can see like the sealer's coming off, then I will sand it. If it's a heat, usually with the heat gun, same concept. So. At this point, I'm just showing you what 
each one does and how each one works and what you have to do with each one. But it's up to you to decide per piece what's the best. Try different things. I use all three of them. It just depends on the piece. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. There will not be a 10 minute Tuesday next week because I will be on vacation with my family for the first time in however long. So I will see you guys Thursday because I will have a furniture video on here. And then I hope you guys have an awesome week. So I will see you later. Bye.